it's it's important to realize that for any any given trig identity, there's there's going to be more than one way to do it. So don't try to you know look at one possible solution and say that's the way to do it. The strategy that most of you, I think, are going to adopt is to change everything to sine and cosine. It's not the only way to do it, but it's it's probably you know a, a good strategy to work with at this point, anyways. So that would mean that if you're working on this side, because this looks a lot more complicated, changing this to sine over cosine. And beyond that now, you can't, if, if you're going to try and simplify this to a single term, maybe, maybe looking ahead from the beginning, if you're going to simplify this to a single term, and you have a binomial that has a minus in it and a binomial that has a minus in it. At some point, you're going to have to cross off a binomial factor, you know, where you cross off the whole thing, okay, like that. At some point, you're going to have to do that. Whereas the previous one had a single thing here. It isn't that it isn't a fraction with this another minus on the bottom where you're going to cross it off. If you if you're taking a two-term thing and turning it into a one-term thing, probably what you're going to have to do is what most of you discover here is at some point you get one minus um, sine squared over cos maybe, no, over sine, and you change it to cos squared, right? If you are, if you have, that's the previous one, right? At some point, you're going to have to make that change. That's how something that has two terms and it turns into something that has one term. This one doesn't have that. This one has two things that have two terms, two binomials. So probably you're not going to use a Pythagorean identity. Probably at some point, you're going to cancel out a binomial factor. If you want to do that, like this is a binomial factor. There's no fractions on the top. I would leave the top alone. But the bottom part, there's something. One of them's a fraction, so it's probably a good idea to change them so they're both fractions with the same denominator so I'm going to change now this thing like like the first step was just changing that to that that's a good start the second step is going to be changing sine so it has the same denominator as the other thing what do we need to change it into here like this is sine over cos so I want to make this have the same denominator if I want to make this have the denominator of cosine what do I have to multiply this thing by up here what can I multiply it by? Now, you're, you're not just multiplying by cos, because that would be changing it. You're multiplying it by cos over cos. Because this is 1. You're multiplying it by 1. You're not changing it, right? I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily write this. I would just show that it's happened in the next step. Okay? So that sign turns into sine cos over cos. Those are the same, right? Sine is the same as sine cos over cos. If you start to do things like, oh, times cosine here, you're going you're gonna to write things that are mathematically incorrect. Don't do that. Just make the change in the next step here. Then you want to combine these two because that was the whole point of making them the same denominator. But you want to leave the top alone. So you're going to have sine cos minus sine over cosine. Make sure you keep track of what the main division bar is, which one it is. Whenever you have complex fractions, I think for people that what allows them the most success is just using the grade 8 thing. If you're dividing by this fraction, write it as a multiplication statement instead. Like the top thing here divided by that fraction is the same as that top thing cos minus 1 times cos over all that other stuff, sine theta, cos theta, minus sine theta. The only problem here is, is if, this, if this is not part of a fraction anymore, this is mathematically incorrect because which of these comes first, order of operations? The multiplying, right? So actually, you got two choices here. You could put brackets around this. Because it's a single thing now, there's nothing. Or you could put it like that. It doesn't matter which one you do, as long as you do one of them to kind of group the top part. I, I think more people tend to do that because then they can ease, more easily see what gets canceled. Nothing seems like it can get canceled yet. If you want 
this factor to appear, you got to take out a common factor there of, of the bottom part here. This builds on all the rational expression stuff you did in grade 10 and maybe grade 11 as well. Cos theta minus 1 over 1 times cos and then factor the bottom part there. If you factor out a sine theta, what's left here? Cos theta minus 1. And you should notice that that would make it the same as up here, so chances are that's what's going to happen if we're going to simplify it, right? If you want, you can cross things off, but it might, in a lot of ways, it'd be better to learn to do it without actually crossing things off, just writing what it is after you've done it here. It's up to you. If you want to show that being crossed off, you can. And then writing down that you have well, 1 over 1 times cos over sine. I'm the kind of person that wants to put every step so it's obvious what I'm doing. If someone's trying to read your proof or mark your proof, you want it to be obvious and they can follow it. Every, st every step you skip makes it harder for the person marking. And they have to sit there and go, what is this person doing? I don't know. They went from here to here. I can't figure out what they did. It might be obvious to you, but it's not obvious to, to the marker always. So you have cos over sine. Now, cos over sine is the same as cotangent. So you, you can change it to cotangent and then go back and change this to cotangent if you want. You can work down both sides and make them both equal to cotangent. But if you want to keep one side all the same like and not touch the other side, you have to make what you have look like cosecant cosine. I'm going to write it down even though my line is going to go like that. The, the other side is cosecant cosine. In the end, we want to show two things that are the same. So I'm not going to do this. Instead, I'm going to split this up. Cosine divided by sine is the same as cosine times 1 over sine, right? Something divided by sine is the same as it multiplied by 1 over that, right? How does that help? Or why does that help? What can I do with each of these now? You have to look at the other side and see what it is you're looking for. You're aiming for one thing to be a cosine, so I'm just going to put it by itself there. And then the other part has to be equal, right? I want it to be a cosecant. It's a 1 over sine. That's what that is, right? 1 over sine is cosecant. But you need to end by saying cosecant cosine here and cosecant cosine. You can, if you really want to just emphasize this, you can say left side equals right side if you want. Some people, for some reason, I have no idea what this means, but they put two little diagonal lines like that. I think there's some meaning behind that to say you're done. If you like Latin, there's in older textbooks, you'd probably see QED. QED is something you do at the end of a proof. Uh, it, it's, it's some abbreviation for some Latin expression that means now I have done what I set out to do or something like that but you don't have to you don't have to uh, quandus et demonstratum or something like that but probably probably this I mean this would certainly make you look very intelligent if you put QED at the end um, left side equals right side might make you look intelligent unless you put them on there unless you put the right side on this side and the left side on the other side but you don't have to put anything but I think people like to do that to show they're finished right and remember, if you can't do it and you're on the provincial exam, if you're taking the provincial exam, um, if you can't do it and you can't figure out, at the very least, make sure your last step over here and your last step over here match, right? Because even if you've done a bunch of uh, magic stuff to make them match, which hopefully you didn't, but if that's what you did, the two last steps, you're trying to show they're equal. At least you're saying, I know that's what I'm trying to show, at the very least. Okay? Um, that's not the only way to do it, by the way. And you're going to get these by, try, by trying things. Try to read the little hints that are here. Can I do this one? I, I will do this one if you guys have tried it. I'll stop this first.